the best 3D printer that I won't use. What? Ever since Bamboo Lab released their first 3D printers last year, other manufacturers have been scrambling to release their own super fast Core XY enclosed machines. Flashforge are the latest manufacturer to throw their hat in the ring with their 5M and 5M Pro models. I've been testing out the 5M Pro for the last few weeks so that I can tell you whether you should buy it or not. If you do decide you want to buy one of the new Flash Forge models, then check out the links in the descriptions where you'll find the best deals I could negotiate for you. This is an unbiased review and in no way a promotional video and all opinions expressed are my own. When you first see the new Adventura models, you may like me think, well, that's just another Core XY machine like all of the others that have been popping up every five minutes this year, but you'd be completely wrong. Actually, that's not quite true. It is quite similar to some other machines, but Flashforge have approached the whole Core XY Clipper thing from a different angle, and the whole user experience with the 5M Pro here is very different to some of the other machines I've used. Whether you love or hate their approach will very much depend on you and how you want to go about your 3D printing. Looks-wise, the 5M Pro is very similar to Creality's K1 along with some other models. It has smoked, semi-transparent panels for the door and lid, and a neat inbuilt touchscreen display. The main body comprises of injection molded plastic panels with a super strong steel frame inside to keep everything solid. That strong frame is needed too because both 5M models are apparently capable of moving the print head around at up to 600mm per second with accelerations of 20,000mm squared. I say apparently because there's not really any way I can verify this other than the time it takes to complete a print. More on this later. These speeds have become pretty standard stuff for Core XY Clipper machines, but not all of the chassis can actually handle those speeds without the printer trying to walk itself out the door. The Flashforge Adventura 5M Pro handles the speeds like a champ though, and I can only assume that the 5M model does too, as they appear to share the exact same steel frame from what I've seen. The 5M just doesn't have the enclosing panels and the air filtration system of the 5M Pro. Air filtration? That's right, the 5M Pro has internal and external air circulation and uses HEPA and activated carbon filters. There isn't a huge amount of information on just how bad for your health FDM 3D printing could be, but if you've ever been around a machine printing ABS or ASA, the smell makes it very clear that there are some kind of particles being released into the air as the filament is being heated. Many people describe getting headaches with these particular filaments, but then others also describe some negative effects with some other materials too. Until we know for sure that everything in the air around a 3D printer is safe to go into our lungs, I personally feel much safer running everything through a filter. The Flashforge system seems to work very well, and whilst I haven't measured the air quality with any kind of instrumentation, there is a massive reduction in the smell when trying to print with some of the more noxious filaments. You can also choose whether you want to circulate the filtered air internally to retain some heat, or vent it externally if you don't. Either way, the air filtration system is a great feature. It works well, and I'd like to see it on all 3D printers in the future, please. Once you've finished admiring the looks of your new machine, you may actually want to start printing with it, and the 5M makes it very easy to do exactly that. Once you've taken it out of the packaging, as with some other Core XY machines, the next thing you're advised to do is actually plug it in and turn it on. Other than maybe attaching the filament holder, there's no assembly to do at all. Once you've selected your language, all you need to do is follow the on-screen instructions and remove a few screws holding the bed secure. Once you've confirmed this is done, the Adventure 5M launches into its fully automated setup routine, where it homes all axes, levels the bed, and then runs Clipper's vibration compensation process. This is a process which measures how much vibration or resonance is created by the printer's fast movements, so that it can use some complicated algorithms to remove any negative effects from the print surface, in theory. Unfortunately, the first time I tried to use this process, I had an error and the printer wouldn't home correctly. After fiddling a little, I found that slightly raising the bed by manually turning the Z-axis drive belt cured everything. I reported everything I found back to Flashforge, so hopefully they will have cured anything that caused this on any production models. If not, well, you now know what to do. Once the process did run though, I was surprised to see that there's absolutely nothing to do once it's finished other than load some filament. On every other 3D printer I've ever worked on, the very least thing you have to do before printing is to set a Z offset. If you don't know what this is, then it shows exactly why not having to do it is such a bonus. The Z offset is basically the gap between the bed and the nozzle, and usually you have to manually set it using something like a piece of paper or a feeler gauge. This single adjustment being incorrect, I would say is the biggest reason why new users have print failures early on. It's a pretty critical measurement down to tenths of a millimetre, and it's just assumed that people know how to do it. 
Flashforge have taken away all of the aggravation for new users and automated the entire thing. The way they do this is to use extremely accurate load cells in the bed to measure where everything is. This is quite a high-end feature and works faultlessly in my experience. Loading filament is pretty simple too. If you want to use the included very basic filament holder that attaches on the back, then you can, but personally, I prefer to use filament storage boxes or dryers rather than leaving my filament exposed where it can absorb moisture. Whatever you use, you just feed the filament into a tube until it comes out the other end above the print head. You then tell the printer that you're ready to load filament and gently push it into the top. Once it grabs, you just push the outer tube down and you're done. This is very similar to some other machines, but the unloading process is quite different and has one major advantage. When it comes to unloading the filament, the 5M doesn't try to retract partially melted filament back out through the extruder where it can potentially cause clogs, which mean a complete hot end disassembly to get printing again. To avoid all of that potential hassle, the 5M just requires that you pull back the outer sleeve tube, cut your filament and pull it out. It then extrudes all of the old filament through the hot nozzle when you load your new filament. Again, this is another well thought out process that takes away potential areas of frustration for beginners. There are quite a few pre-sliced models supplied on the included USB stick and you can start printing some or all of them straight away. You can also gain access to a huge amount of other models using Flash Cloud, Flash Forge's online portal for accessing your 3D printer. I did get this set up quite easily, but unfortunately, actually connecting to my 3D printer with any kind of consistency is a little bit hit and miss at the moment. If you're looking to buy your first 3D printer, then I would highly recommend learning to slice your own models as early as possible. This will enable you to take any model that you've either downloaded online or designed yourself and get it ready for printing on your machine. The included USB comes with two software options for you to choose between. There's Flash Print and Orca Slicer. Flash Print gives you quick, easy to use profiles for most filament types and will get you up and running the quickest. Using Flash Print, you can also connect to your printer through your home network, send it ready to print files, and even see what's going on inside using the inbuilt camera. This all works pretty well, but Flash Print isn't the most advanced of slicers, and once you've mastered the basics, you may want to move on to doing some more advanced things, which is where Orca Slicer comes in. Flashforge even tell you that Orca Slicer is more advanced and include an Adventure 5M Pro, which you can easily import if you want to use it. Unfortunately, if you use any other slicer other than Flash Print, you lose the ability to send files to your printer or to view the camera. This is a big minus in my opinion, and I told Flashforge as much. I also think there are some other rather large limitations around Flashforge's approach, but you'll have to stick with me to see what they are and decide whether they're going to bother you. I'll explain all shortly. First, let's have a look at some actual print results. As you would expect, PLA prints well, as does PETG. TPU wasn't amazing, but that will just be the slicer profile and nothing to do with the printer hardware or firmware. ASA prints were good, and I was particularly impressed with the nylon results using a modified ABS profile. This is because there's no nylon or PA profile at the moment. With some of the PETG and TPU prints, I changed the fitted 0.4mm nozzle to the included 0.6mm one. Flashforge use a unique system which makes nozzle changes a breeze. After removing filament, you just press the two red buttons on either side of the print head and pull the whole nozzle assembly down and out. The new one just slots straight in and you're ready to go after a quick bed recalibration. Now while this hot swap hot end process is really slick, it's also quite expensive. There are a range of nozzle sizes from 0.25mm to 0.8mm, but each assembly is around 35 to 40 US dollars, which is around 30 pounds in the UK. With a bit of investigation, I found that the nozzle tips are actually removable, so Flashforge or another manufacturer could make replacement nozzle tips if they wanted to, but there was nothing available at the time of making the video. The nozzles that I was sent were steel and hardened steel, so it's going to be a while before they wear out, but it's something to bear in mind if you're thinking about buying this machine. Flashforge advertise super silent printing with the Adventurer 5M Pro, but certainly initially, that's not what I got. I had a weird noise that strangely seemed to change in volume depending on the bed height and where I touched the back panel. With some further investigation, I found that there was a badly rooted stepper motor wire that was touching on a fan with the slightest bit of movement. All it took was rerouting this cable to get rid of the noise, but it's not something you should have to do. And it seemed really weird to me that something like this should be overlooked on such an otherwise well-designed and built machine. 
I sent all of this footage back to FlashForge so that they would have all of the information needed to remedy this oversight so there's no excuse for people receiving units with the same problem in future. But again, if you do get one like this, at least now you know how to fix it. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is the actual print surface. Both 5M models have a double-sided flexible magnetic PEI bed surface, but they don't seem to have much confidence in it because they supply a 3D printing adhesive and basically tell you to use it all the time. In my experience, this is not necessary and actually I found it reduced adhesion when I used it. When I then tried to wash it off, it seemed to leave some sort of residue which other bed adhesives that I use don't, so my advice would be to not use it. If you do find that you need better bed adhesion on any 3D printer, then my advice would be to use a spray-on product like 3D Lac, which always seems to improve things for me and is easy to wash off with no residue. Another couple of things that get extra points from me when it comes to the removable bed are the locating slots on the back and the plastic bar along the front. These two features together mean that you won't need to spend ages trying to realign your print surface when you put it back on, and when you remove a hot bed you won't be risking burning your hands. Part cooling is great with what FlashForge call dual channel cooling at the hot end and an auxiliary fan at the side which helps with cooling hot filament quickly. So if this 3D printer is so good, why won't I be using it? Well for me, it's all to do with the restrictions that FlashForge have put on the way that we can use it. You see, with Clipper, the firmware that a lot of these new Core XY machines use, one of the major benefits is the access you get to all of the behind the scenes setup of how your 3D printer works, and it gives you the ability to customize many different preferences. This also includes full access to any camera and a separate web interface that can be accessed either through many of the more popular slicers or completely independently from any web browser on a PC, phone or tablet connected to the same network as your 3D printer. What FlashForge have decided to do is block all of this access and customizability, I assume to prevent users messing things up. The plus side to all of these tight controls is that FlashForge can fully control what can and can't be done with their machines. And assuming they get things right, new users are much less likely to make mistakes. The negative side of all of these tight controls is that FlashForge can fully control what can and can't be done with their machines. There'll be no community-inspired mods, inclusion of brand new Clipper features that FlashForge don't approve of, or even customizing of things like macros to suit your own personal preferences. You also can't see any information about the bed mesh or manually tune things like PID settings, rotational distances, or pressure advance. These features will have all been pre-set up by FlashForge, but sometimes you might want to refine some of these settings depending on the filament you're using, for instance. As an example, on this CaliCat, the corners are bulging a little bit. To counter this, I would usually try a different pressure advance setting. This feature in basic terms tries to combat the natural pressure buildup and release as semi-fluid filament is forced through the little hole in the nozzle. With the Adventure 5M you can't edit this setting, you can only change your slicer settings which don't always achieve the same results. As I said earlier, whether you love or hate this approach completely depends on you and how you want to go about your 3D printing. If you just want a 3D printer as a tool that prints stuff exactly like the manufacturer intended, you'll love it. If you've never owned a 3D printer before, then you may be wondering what possible other way is there to use a 3D printer. Well, 3D printing has come to be known as a hobby in of itself. In the early days, you couldn't just buy a working 3D printer. You had to buy all of the components and build it yourself. A working 3D printer was quite an achievement and owners would often modify their homebrew machines to achieve higher print speeds or better quality finishes. The thought of a non-modifiable 3D printer that just works when you press a button will actually be quite a turnoff to this type of 3D printer user. I have to admit, I'm also in this camp to some degree. Not just because I want to mess with stuff to see how it works, well there is a little bit of that, but mainly because I want to take full advantage of the hardware that I'm paying for and not be limited by what a manufacturer thinks I can cope with. There are also some key features that I want with my 3D printers because of the way that I use my machines. My 3D printers are in my workshop, not in my house. While sat on my PC, I want to be able to turn my 3D printer on, get it heating while I slice a file, and then send that file to the printer and start a print. I'll then watch the first couple of layers through the camera to make sure everything's okay. I then want to be able to check in every now and again to make sure that the print's progressing well. Once it's finished, I then want to be able to remotely switch it off, and there'd be no need for me to actually go out to my workshop unless I want the model or if I need to change filament. The FlashForge machines will do a lot of those things, but not all. 
I tend to use smart plugs to turn my machines on and off remotely, but you can't do that with the 5M models because they have a soft power button on the front as well as the main power switch on the back. This means that unless you leave your machine permanently powered on, you always have to go to the machine to press a button before you can think about sending anything remotely or watching the camera. There is an automatic shutdown option for after a print is finished, but then you have to get up and go and turn it back on again for the next time you want to print. To me, this makes the whole remote connection part almost useless. If I've got to get up and go and turn my 3D printer on, then I might as well just take a USB stick with a pre-sliced file and print from the USB stick like the good old days. I understand that my particular setup might be quite unique, but my point is that FlashForge have designed these printers with a very specific user in mind. This person has their 3D printer very close to the PC that they're slicing their files on, or they like getting up every five minutes. This person is uninterested in fiddling with their printer and are happy to use the machine just as FlashForge intended. They're also not going to be interested in printing with any difficult engineering filaments and are happy to buy any and all spares from FlashForge at whatever price they choose to charge for them and for as long as they choose to produce them. If this sounds like you, then this really is the best 3D printer that you can buy for the money, in my opinion. If not, then there may be some better options for you. Don't forget to check out the links in the description if you decide to buy one of these models, and if not, check out one of these videos to see some other options you currently have with 3D printers. Hit like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more in the future. Thanks for watching.